Welcome to the Sasquatch News Update featuring Bigfoot in the News for January 2021 here at Great Lakes Sasquatch. In the headlines today, we have a report coming to us from the state of Oklahoma. Reported by TheBlaze.com on January 25th, 2021. Oklahoma lawmaker files bill to create a Bigfoot hunting season. A Republican lawmaker in Oklahoma wants to see his state cash in on Americans' obsession with mythical creatures. State Representative Justin Humphrey introduced a bill in the State House of Representatives last week that would create a Bigfoot hunting season, Popular Mechanics reported and he thinks it could be a boon for the Sooner State. Humphrey introduced HB 1648 last week, which would direct the Oklahoma Wildlife Conservation Commission to establish a specific hunting season for tracking down Sasquatch, complete with licenses and fees. The Oklahoma Wildlife Conservation Commission shall promulgate rules establishing a Bigfoot hunting season. The commission shall set annual season dates and create any necessary specific hunting licenses and fees. But he does not want hunters to actually kill the beast. Instead, Humphrey said in a press release after introducing the bill, he wants the state to offer a $25,000 bounty for the first person to trap the creature and bring it in. Humphrey emphasized that the state could benefit from an increase in tourism should the government go through with this bill. Tourism is one of the biggest attractions we have in my house district, Humphrey said in the release. Establishing an actual hunting season and issuing licenses for people who want to hunt Bigfoot will just draw more people to our already beautiful part of the state. It will be a great way for people to enjoy our area and to have some fun. A lot of people don't believe in Bigfoot, but a lot of people do, Humphrey said, just like some people like to go deer hunting while some don't. He added that though Bigfoot is a less serious matter than censorship or the beef industry, two topics on which he said he has also filed legislation, tourism is huge for his constituents and just as important. He believes a Bigfoot hunting season would result in a major boost for his local economy. According to Humphrey, the press release said his hometown already has a Bigfoot festival every October, so he believes the proposed hunting season should align with that. Having a license and a tag would give people a way to prove they participated in the hunt, the lawmaker said. Again, the overall goal is to get people to our area to enjoy the natural beauty and to have a great time. And if they find Bigfoot while they're at it, well, hey, that's just an even bigger prize. But as the New York Post reported, this Bigfoot hunting proposal has Sasquatch enthusiasts crying foul. The New York Post reported on January 30th, 2021. Bagging Bigfoot is something upstaters Gary Robusto and Paul Bartholomew can't imagine doing. Not that they don't believe the seven-foot-tall, hairy, man-like creature exists, but they're committed to protecting the elusive beast for the sake of science, especially when others want to put a bounty on his head. Last week, Oklahoma State Representative Justin Humphrey filed a measure that calls on the State Conservation Department to set an annual hunting season to coincide with a Bigfoot Fest in his southeastern district, complete with licenses. He wants a $25,000 bounty for the first to nab Sasquatch alive. Humphrey insists he only wants to bring in tourists and their cash and a emphasizes he doesn't want to kill Bigfoot. I can promise I am going to be on one of the first hunts, and I guarantee you we will have fun, and that's what it's all about, he told the Oklahoman. That is what we are trying to promote. 
When New York-based Bigfoot enthusiasts got wind of Humphrey's scheme, they fumed. Bigfoot should be protected, not shot, Robusto told the Post. These creatures should be preserved in their natural environment. Any kind of new species, like a Bigfoot, even needs the protection of some kind of federal law. Bartholomew called the bounty idea a gimmick and pointed out his hometown of Whitehall, considered the Bigfoot capital of the Northeast by believers, passed legislation that he proposed in the early 2000s, establishing the area as a protective habitat for Sasquatch and banning the willful harming of the creature. Also included in the measure is a tribute to Bigfoot's long history in New York, from early sightings by the Algonquin and Iroquois tribes to now. He modeled the law, which doesn't include any fines or jail time for violators, after one in Washington State's Skamania County and one in Port Henry, which protects Lake Champlain's Champ, an aquatic monster. Last year, Oklahoma had 104 Bigfoot sightings, lagging behind New York's 113. Both states fall in the middle of state rankings. The Pacific Northwest, Washington State, California, and Oregon top the list. A hunting season is a bad idea all around, certainly for Bigfoot, but also the hunters, Bartholomew said. You could have hunters hurting themselves, shooting a little haphazardly. Robusto, 41, told the Post he has seen a Yeti twice. In 2012, not far from the town of Whitehall on the Vermont border, and about a month ago in Albany County where he lives. The first sighting came on a favorable favorite hiking trail at night. Robusto had a night vision monocular light scoping out wildlife. Instead, he came across a Bigfoot climbing down a tree about 60 feet in front of him. I was watching it, and it blinked at me. His latest setting was in the woods, too, about 1 p.m. On the ridge line stood a Bigfoot. Robusto had a fight-or-flight response. He stayed. It was staring right at me. It put the fear of God into me real quick. I was a big skeptic. And then, next thing I know, I'm a believer, said Robusto, a chef. Now, I have more understanding. A few points for the uninitiated from Robusto. There isn't just one Bigfoot. There are many around the world called different names. Sasquatch in Canada, Yaren in China, Yawi in Australia, and Yeti in Russia. Legend portrays them as gentle giants, although they look dangerous. Seven to nine feet tall, lumbering, furry, with glowing eyes. Bartholomew has been fascinated with the unexplained since he was a boy growing up in Whitehall. Today at 57, the frozen foods manager investigates sightings, learning as many details as he can, plotting locations, and trying to pick up on patterns. He said he hears about more sightings in August, September, and October, probably because more hikers are on the trails, he said. Robusto counts four or five a week. Bigfoot even traipses along a wrong <laughs> Long Island, according to purported witnesses. New York City has no reported sightings, although Mayor de Blasio fits some descriptions of a hunch lurching Sasquatch. This is a global enigma, Bartholomew told the Post. For the skeptic, these creatures don't exist. But why are people seeing these creatures? Joe Nickel, a senior research fellow at the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, has driven from his home in Buffalo to visit Bartholomew. They have vigorous but friendly debates, but they do think the same way about Humphrey's proposal. It's a wackadoodle idea. What he's doing is an absolute invitation to needlessly kill wildlife, especially bears, because they resemble Bigfoot, Nickel told the Post. I don't know why we would want people unleashing guns out in the forest to hunt Bigfoot. They may shoot Littlefoot themselves. 
And as Fox News reports, the Oklahoma representative faces backlash for his Bigfoot hunting season, and he says he's been called an idiot. This report was reported on foxnews.com on January 24th. Leave Bigfoot alone. That's the sentiment that some believers are reportedly sharing after finding out that a lawmaker in Oklahoma is pushing for a Bigfoot hunt. The elected official recently revealed that despite the fact that his hunt for the mythical creature aims to bring it in alive, he's still receiving negative feedback from both believers and non-believers alike. Last week, Fox News reported that Representative Justin Humphrey introduced House Bill 1648, urging the Oklahoma Wildlife Conservation Commission to establish a Bigfoot hunting season. The Oklahoma Wildlife Conservation Commission shall promulgate rules establishing a Bigfoot hunting season, the bill states. The commission shall set annual season dates and create any necessary specific hunting licenses and fees. It is a real bill, yes, Michael Holmes, Assistant Chief of the Information and Education Division at the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, confirmed to Fox News on Thursday. Representative Humphrey told TMZ that since news of the bill broke, he's been flooded with calls and messages from people upset with him over the bill. According to the report, Bigfoot deniers are apparently angry with him for wasting time on a bill based around a creature that doesn't exist. Humphrey says that deniers have called him an idiot, cursed at him over the bill, and said they would never vote for him again. Meanwhile, Bigfoot believers also aren't happy, although Humphrey reportedly says the believers have generally been more polite. According to him, their main complaint is that they think Bigfoot should be left alone. Oklahoma reportedly has a high number of Bigfoot sightings. For those on Sasquatch Watch, Bigfoot has also been spotted in North Carolina, Georgia, Washington, and Oregon in recent years. And in entertainment news, PenLive.com reports that Pennsylvania Bigfoot experts are going to be on a new paranormal show and tell us a little more on how to watch. This article was posted on January 20th, 2021. A pair of Pennsylvania's most well-known investigators of the unexplained appear on the most recent episode of the Travel Channel's newest show, Paranormal Declassified. New episodes of the show air at 10 p.m. Monday and are rebroadcast at various points in the channel's schedule later in the week and beyond. Episode number five, Tracking Bigfoot, which includes the Pennsylvania experts, first aired Monday, January 18th, but will be shown again at 11 a.m. Saturday, January 23rd, 11 p.m. Monday, January 25th, 3 a.m. Tuesday, January 26th, 6 p.m. Monday, February 8th, and 10 a.m. February 18th. It's also available through the Discovery Plus paid streaming app. The Pennsylvania experts appearing in the episode are Eric Altman of Irwin and Stan Gordon of Greensburg. Beginning his field research in 1997, Altman has been founder of the Southwestern Pennsylvania Bigfoot Study Group, a field investigator for the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, director of the Pennsylvania Bigfoot Society, and most recently, founder and director of the Pennsylvania Cryptozoology Society. He has investigated nearly 300 cases in Pennsylvania and across the country. Gordon, who Altman describes as his mentor, has been researching Bigfoot and UFO phenomena for more than 60 years. He has been a sought-after conference speaker for decades and has been featured in uncounted TV shows, news reports, 
documentaries, and films. He is the author of Really Mysterious Pennsylvania, Silent Invasion, the Pennsylvania UFO Bigfoot Casebook, and Astonishing Encounters, Pennsylvania's Unknown Creatures. A former state director for the Mutual UFO Network, in 1987, he was the first recipient of the MUFON Meritorious Achievement in a UFO Investigation Award. The new show, Paranormal Declassified, is not much different than dozens of similar shows that have come before it. The host, investigative journalist Paul Biban, may have access to some shiny new gadgets, but his paranormal investigations seem to take him to the same places and same conclusions as his predecessors. For the Tracking Bigfoot episode, he followed the theory that Bigfoot is some sort of descendant of a Gigantopithecus-type primate that came across the Bering Land Bridge from Asia into Alaska 20,000 years ago and then spread thinly across North America, all the way into what today is southwestern Pennsylvania. That led him to Chestnut Ridge in southwestern Pennsylvania, where Altman and Gordon are the experts. On Chestnut Ridge, Biban and his crew discovered a lean-to type structure, which he described as a strange formation of branches and brush that smelled gamey, musty. It looked a lot like a thousand lean-tos built by a thousand Boy Scouts working on their wilderness survival merit badges. The episode did feature Jeff Meldrum, professor of anatomy and anthropology at Idaho State University and his impressive collection of difficult to explain footprint casts. The other episodes in the series have focused on water monsters, skinwalkers, cattle mutilations, and alien cover-up. MarketWatch.com reports that Eureka, California denies having a Bigfoot in its Redwood Park. This report was published on January 16th, 2021. A coastal town in Northern California discounts media claims that a hairy humanoid is in its public park and requests that visitors avid the area where a canopy walk is being constructed in a redwood forest. The city of Eureka issued the statement after numerous news websites circulated photos of a primate-like form in Sequoia Park, a 70-acre public preserve on the outskirts of town. Miles Slattery, city manager for the city of Eureka, said he was aware of the images, purported to show a primate form on a platform more than 50 feet off the ground in the redwoods, but he dismissed the idea of a primitive man-monster in the park. It's a pretty big place, but none of our staff has reported anything, he said. The structure in question is part of the city's Redwood Skywalk, slated to open in the spring to connect the forest with the city's zoo. The $4 million aerial trail will extend a quarter mile, linking numerous tree platforms and rising more than 100 feet above the forest floor. The ADA-compliant project will include an adventure segment for more daring visitors. Slattery urged residents and curious visitors to please avoid the area during the final construction phase to reduce the impacts on the park and zoo. In recent weeks, media outlets including Coast to Coast AM, iHeartRadio, KHVH, and Atlas Obscura posted reports of a possible hominid in a trio in a tall redwood tree, citing photographs taken by a former volunteer for the zoo. Several of the outlets noted that nearby Willow Creek is known as the Bigfoot capital of the world, given the many encounters in the area and that the term Bigfoot was coined there in the 1950s. Some of the media cited Dr. Richard Stepp, a former professor of physical sciences at Humboldt State University, who theorized that a Bigfoot could be in the park. There are streams that flow through the park, covered with thick underbrush. 
Streams are traditional passageways for large mammals to travel without detection, said Stepp, a lifelong researcher on paranormal topics. Moreover, he added, there have been other Bigfoot reports near Eureka, including the testimony of an eyewitness from a farm south of town in the 1940s. In a communication with a media representative with the city, Stepp clarified that he had not personally seen the photos and that his analysis was merely hypothetical. And lastly, the Toronto Star reports that a possible Bigfoot sighting shocked and excited Silverton residents. This was reported on Thursday, January 14th, 2021. Twas the night of Christmas, and through the West Coot, not a creature was sighted, except maybe Bigfoot. At least that's how the famous poem could go after a group of travelers spotted what they say might have been a Bigfoot, also known as a Sasquatch, near Silverton on Christmas night. The four friends were heading to their home on Highway 6, just south of Silverton on the evening of December 25th, when the people in the front of the vehicle saw what looked like a huge, man-like figure on the side of the road. I didn't see the creature myself. I saw the prince, says Erica Spink D'Souza, who was in the back seat. She's become the informal spokesperson for her companions. But the person on the front seat cried out, Oh my gosh, look at that. They said it looked like a huge grizzly or it was a large man standing up. But before Spink D'Souza could catch a glimpse, the figure turned, went on all fours and headed deep into the bush. We tried to turn around and look again, but it was gone, she says. After arriving home and putting her kids to bed, they returned to the scene to look for signs of the mysterious creature. We saw all these different tracks, and then we saw these tracks that were really alarming, she recalls. They were bipedal tracks in a straight line into the woods. I got a little spooked. It was alarming to see such big prints, but there were no bear tracks. Spink D'Souza and the others examined and photographed the tracks, and then she filed a report with the Bigfoot organization online. The head of the Bigfoot Field Research Group Matt Moneymaker, who also co-hosted a long-running Animal Planet TV show called Finding Bigfoot, described the tracks as unhoaxable. The surrounding pristine snow proves the tracks were not fabricated by humans. He says, the stride length is beyond the ability of a human trying to leap through knee-deep snow. The drag marks and depth of the tracks prove they are not from a leaping rabbit. The linear pattern shows that it was not a bear. Moneymaker also says it's unlikely someone was trying to hoax random travelers on a stretch of empty road on Christmas night. Spink D'Souza, who just recently moved to the area, says she's never had something like this happen to her before, though she's heard weird animal sounds howling in the bush around her new home. She says locals she's spoken to have generally accepted her claim. Well, it's the Kootenays, she says, laughing. I told them what happened, and they start telling me their Bigfoot stories. People were saying, oh, that's the Wanderer. There's a Sasquatch who wanders around here, she says. It sounds like around here people are pretty open to the possibility there is one. The sighting was strong enough that members of an Okanagan Bigfoot group returned to the location about 10 days after the sighting. But after investigating the scene and examining the tracks carefully, the team put a damper on the excitement. They suspect the tracks are from a very large moose, says Moneymaker, who's based in California. The witnesses may have seen a large female moose facing forward and mistook it for a man-like figure. But since nearly two weeks have passed since the initial sighting, Moneymaker says there's still room to believe. It's up in the air, he says. In most cases, I can usually say it's looking more one way than the other. But in this case, I can't. I think there are moose tracks in the area, yes. But there are witnesses who said they did not see a moose. 
Moneymaker says he'd love someone with a drone to fly along the trail of the purported tracks to see where they lead. Sasquatches are thought by some to be present in the West Kootenai. Paranormal researchers believe it could be a lost subspecies of hominid, like the extinct Gigantopithecus, a large ape-like creature whose remains have been found in Southeast Asia. However, no convincing physical evidence has ever been found to support these claims. For Spink D'Souza, the incident has left her with a larger sense of the magic of the world. It leaves me with a sense of awe and wonderment on all the beautiful mysteries of this world, she says, noting indigenous cultures recognize the existence of the Sasquatch. In terms of looking for evidence, in concrete ways, that's fine, but I do hold a respect that there are people around who know of the existence of Sasquatch, and that's marvelous. If you see a Sasquatch, you're invited to contact the Bigfoot Field Research Organization through their website. Well, thank you so much for joining me for Bigfoot in the news today. This has been your Sasquatch News Update, covering Sasquatch news for January 2021. Links to the articles in this video are provided in the description box below this video. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share with a friend. You can find us on our website at greatlakesasquatch.com. Thanks again. Have a great day. If you have an interesting piece of Sasquatch news you would like to share with the community here, please email me at squatch at greatlakesasquatch.com. Happy squatching! <laughs>